how do you decide what to paint when there is so much going on? The leaves of the trees are really bright this year. There is so much to paint. I feel like a kid in a candy shop trying to figure out what to paint. There's just so much, I can hardly narrow it down. I took a whole day at the beginning of this week just to drive around and take pictures and video of all of the beauty everywhere. But as I think about it, I have narrowed it down to something that is really standing out to me. I love the contrast in a tree in the autumn between its branches and trunk and the bright colored leaves. This is the spot that I've chosen to do this autumn tree on plein air painting. I love the contrast between the trunk and the branches of the tree, which are very dark, against the bright yellow leaves that we got going on. But as you can see, it's a little bit windy today and uh, the leaves are starting to fall. So I don't think this tree is gonna last much longer with the leaves the way they are. So we're gonna go ahead and try to paint it here. I got an umbrella in case it starts raining. So let's set up and get into the painting. I'll show you guys the composition that I'm looking at and uh, yeah, we'll jump into it. So obviously the tree is going to be a focal point and I got some background sky showing through up here but then I got a forest that's very dark coming in like that and then this foreground hill with this tree as the focal point. But the panel that I'm working on as you can see is either going to be vertical like this or horizontal like this. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do other than I'll have to decide which way I'm gonna have the panel. All right, everybody, on the palette today we have Titanium White, Sky Blue, Payne's Gray, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Brilliant Red, Yellow Ochre, and Lemon Yellow. And we have a little vial of linseed oil, which we're gonna be using. And we're gonna start off with the sketch. As you can see, I have chosen to have our panel be vertical instead of horizontal because it's a rectangle. So we're gonna be featuring that tree coming up like this. And I'm gonna start sketching it in with some burnt sienna. And right away, I wanna start with the slope of the hill, which comes up like this and then over, right like that, okay? And because our panel is untoned, is this is just white, it will help our painting to be brighter when it's done. And then we have our forest in the background, about like that. Okay, so this is all gonna be dark. There's probably gonna be some background trunks of trees and whatnot. Back here, I see there's some birch back there. It looks like some poplar. We'll have that. This is all gonna be pretty dark down here. But then our focal point is that tree and I actually might want to lower the hill a little bit just so I can fit more of that tree in there. I think I'll leave, well I might lower the, the forest a little bit, but I don't mind having the panel untoned today. I don't mind having the stark white because the sun isn't out which means there's not going to be a bright glare. So I don't mind that. All right we have the tree coming up like this. Pretty straight. Woo! It's windy, windy, windy. We have a branch coming off there. We have a branch coming off here. Breaks off into two. Comes down that way. This goes up like that. We're gonna put a lot of leaves up in here. I realize I made a mistake, guys. I need the hill to be lower. And I think I wanna make the tree a little bit closer. So I'm gonna bring it down even further. 
like that. We're going to bring our tree down. Dark down there. We got some trunks back there. Some other colors. Yellow up in here. Branches coming out all over the place. This is all going to be probably yellow back there. Okay. Well, I don't know. I am really struggling with the sketch today. I think, I guess it's the composition I'm struggling with. I think I want to actually keep the tree a little bit smaller. Have a little bit more range of the tree upward. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Uh, we're just, we're just going to jump in and work with it. Okay, first up comes the sky, which is basically going to be gray today. And for the gray sky, I'm using sky blue burnt sienna and titanium white. So let's come up in here and put that sky in. That needs to be brighter. I can already tell that. So I'm going to add more titanium white to it. Lift the value a little bit. Try that. It's looking a little bit better. I might want to lift it even more after this. There's going to be a lot of yellow in here, so I don't need to worry too much about where this is going. I might actually apply some of this later. I'll add a little bit more titanium white, I think. Alright, that's that's pretty good for now. It's a good base in there. Um, I'll probably add a little bit more later as I start painting the tree, but I think that's good. Now we're going to move into that background, which is pretty dark. And I don't want it to be as dark as the trunk of the tree. That's what's going to be the darkest. The tree trunk here and the, and the branches are our darkest value. So I want to mix this background just a little bit lighter than that. And we're going to try painting it in a dirty green color. I think that looks pretty good. So I'll just drop this background in. And I want variation in the background. I don't need the background to be all one color and one value. I want there to be some differences. It looks like there's a little bit of red back in there. So I'm going to put in some red back here. There's even some yellow back in there I'm seeing a little bit of but I want to keep them very muted and dark because I don't want them to compete with the leaves of this tree. I'm going to bring it up into this area. And I want this corner down here to be the darkest area of the background. All right, now I'm going to get this foreground on and then I'll see how I feel about the background. And there's going to be a lot of yellow in there. So I'm going to start off with some yellow. This is yellow ochre. Maybe lighten it up with some lemon yellow just a little bit. We can always add a little bit of titanium white in here to lighten up the value if we need. It's pretty yellow right up in there and then it does mix with some green down in here. Okay, I think that's pretty good for up there. Now we're going to put in this tree here. So we want dark, dark, dark. So I'm using Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber. Just solid Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber. And I'm going to put in the tree. And hopefully it will be the darkest. Hopefully it will stand out the way I want it to. I don't need to put all of it in completely because there's going to be some leaves in here covering a lot of it. So I don't need to put the entire 
thing in like I sketched it out. The sketch was just kind of to help me figure out in my own mind where they were going to be even if I don't paint them in because they're in there underneath the leaves and sometimes it helps to know where even if they're going to be covered by the leaves. So now I'm going to start to paint in the leaves and I think because I already painted in the background behind it and filled everything in with paint, I'm going to take a little bit of a shop towel here and wipe away some of the paint in a few spots where I know the leaves are going to go. It's going to be a little bit here and that way it'll, it'll help me uh, figure out what the leaves will look like when they're painted in because I can already see the spots more or less where they are based on the removal of this paint. Okay, a lot up in here. The wind actually just blew a bunch of them off. So, kind of gives me the option of having a lot more branch showing. I might go with that, who knows. All right, now it's time to put the leaves in. And I'm gonna start off with yellow ochre mixed with a little bit of lemon yellow, just to get that vibrancy. And I want to hold back a little bit with the chroma of these leaves. I want everything to be just a little bit dull at this point. And the reason for that is I want somewhere to go with highlights later on. Looks like there's a lot up in here. Now when I'm painting these leaves, I don't need to paint them exactly the way they look on the tree. I'm using the tree as a reference. I'm here, I'm standing in this spot, I can look at the tree, but I don't need to paint exactly what I see in the tree. I don't need to paint each leaf. I can take a little bit of license and move things around a little bit. And uh, I think for these areas further down, I want to paint more of the of the individual leaves because it's, it's really cool. That's actually the way it looks right now, and I'll show you guys here quick. I love the way the leaves are so sparse down below here. You got a clump right there, you got one hanging out right here, kind of in front of the trunk a little bit, and then you have some sparse leaves out on this branch right here. And uh, I love how this branch comes down like that, and then you have those leaves on there. But I want to paint these leaves on the bottom a little bit more in detail to help the leaves really stand out. So I think I'm gonna go back over the whole thing now and start to put on more detail. I want to darken up the background a little bit more. Add in some more pockets of dark. I think I want to darken it up just a little bit more. We'll get some more red down in here. Okay, next up I'm going to put in some of those tree trunks in the background that are on the edge of the wood and to do that I can just take a gray color that is very similar to the sky color we've been using just dull it down a little bit with some Payne's gray and, and burnt umber and we'll try this out you can see how it's already mixing with the background put some more in there 
I'm, I'm going to take that one out. I don't quite like where that one's positioned. I'm going to take that one out. Or maybe keep it like that. Okay, I don't know if I'll keep it that way. I might just want to simplify, but you can see those trees are there. Well, I'm not quite sure if I'll keep those there or not. I might just uh, smooth them back out. But let's come into the foreground hill here and start working. I'm just going to kind of add in some leaf suggestions, just like this. And to get these leaves on here, I'm just taking that yellow leaf mixture and dabbing it on. Brush strokes help support that overall feel of the leaves on the ground and, and the texture they form. There's a few spots where there's some dark shadows too, I can add those in. I remember one time when I was a kid, I couldn't wait for fall to come. I just wanted it to come so bad and it was like early September and so I went and got the rake out. I went out to the front yard and there was hardly any leaves at all. I raked up this pitiful little pile of leaves and I got a book and I went out in the front yard and I don't think I was really even interested in the book but I just wanted so bad to sit in the leaf pile and do something quaint. So I sat in my little pitiful leaf pile and read a book. Now, the yellow of these leaves compared to the yellow up here is a little bit more desaturated. So this is very yellow because it's the top part of the leaf, but if you turn it around, it's less yellow. And when leaves fall, oftentimes they fall like this. So the leaves on the ground are having a lot of leaves that are showing the bottom side. And that creates a pattern of yellow that is less saturated than the yellow in the leaves up here. And I can achieve that by adding a little bit of titanium white to the yellow mixture to lift the value, yes, but also to desaturate the yellow. Okay, I think that's good for now. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more branches in here. And again, that mixture is burnt umber and Payne's gray. I like that branch right there. I think our painting would be served better if we take out these trunks that I put in, in the background. We can leave a little bit in there just to show that there are some tree trunks back there. But I think this is really all we need. I want it to be blurry and fuzzy in the background anyway. Now I think I want to bring some leaves in front of this area just like that and then I want to add some leaves down here as well I've always really liked color and if you look at my website and you see the paintings I've done they all tend to be very chromatic, very saturated, very colorful. And I suppose that's why I could just paint the autumn over and over again, because I love how colorful everything is. Take this out there. 
Okay, there's also some gonna go right about here. Load my brush again. Want this thick paint going on top of the trunk, not smearing it. So to do that, I need a good amount of, you can see there, paint to be on my brush. Let's get that one right up in here. A few more spots with leaves up in here and we're just about ready to put on the highlights and finish everything up. Simple painting but when you're doing plain airs I think it's best to simplify and really focus on the main themes and if you really like the painting you can take it back to the studio and finish it up there. Take a little bit more time on it. But while I'm out here I want to focus on those main themes that are really standing out to me. I want to add in that branch coming down like this. Right into there. The more I look at it, the more I want to just take these out. I just think they're a little bit distracting. So, they're out. I don't know, I just like it I just like it better without them. So you can edit what's before you. The tree that I'm looking at has those, but mine doesn't necessarily have to if I don't want. And next up, I'm gonna put in the leaf highlights. I'm gonna use lemon yellow and titanium white for that. Well, there's not much highlights today because it's a very muted light. So, I can kind of just highlight most everything. I am doing this mainly because I want another value to the leaves, just to add some interest. And also because the painting needs more leaves. There's not enough in there. And I want to put most of them up at the top here. So I think we're going to put some right up there, maybe take that out and just fill that area in with leaves. I did like the way it looked before, but I think this helps balance out the composition a little bit better. Now, have to be careful not to mix green up there because remember, the sky has some blue in it, so it would be easy to create a green. So I'll just bring some of this over as well, I think. How does that look? I'm always checking my strokes and seeing how everything is working because shapes when you situate them just right, they will balance each other out and create a nice harmonious look to the painting. If I had all my leaves going like this way, you know, just side to side, horizontal, the painting look, would look really weird. So I want to add some shapes pointing down, some pointing this way, and have all kinds of different shapes to balance out the composition. Last thing I want to try here is painting in a leaf that is falling. So there we go, there's one, put another one right down there, just like that, maybe one back, back here. It got pretty dark on me, there's some rain clouds moving in, so I think it might rain, but that's okay because we're basically done. I, I'm just doing one last thing here, and that is I took some of my brilliant red and my yellow ochre and I mixed a orange kind of color here. And I'm putting it in a few select areas of the leaves. It's a uh, low value, so it's a little bit darker, and I want to get just a little bit of that orange color in um, because I'm seeing some orange up in the tree. And it provides a nice background leaf color that's maybe a little bit more in shadow. So I'm just finishing up with that. 
I don't want to put too much in because I want to preserve that yellow color. All right, I think that's good. I've captured what I wanted to capture in this painting. And so I'm gonna call it finished. And if you guys are wondering why I never sign my name on these plein air paintings, I guess it's because either I forget or I can't find a spot where I want to put my initials on the actual painting or it's because I sign the back of the panel when I get back to the studio. I just uh, take some pen and I write in the back. So I do recommend you write your initials or uh, sign your name somehow on the painting just because you did it and it's your painting. So I'm gonna just sign my name here really quick with a lighter color. Okay, that's it. So that is gonna wrap it up for this one. This is a good little en plein air study painting. Happy with it. It's getting kind of dark, so it's hard to see, uh, but I really like it. It uh, captures what I wanted to capture. And so I'm gonna pack everything up, get out of here before I get totally soaked. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then, God bless y'all, we'll see you later. Well, as you can see, it's a really good thing that we finished up when we did because no sooner had I got the painting done, it started pouring. And as you can see, I've taken shelter in this uh, little pavilion area. The leaves on the tree that I was just painting are starting to come down a lot. So it's a good thing I painted it when I did because there's probably not gonna be that many leaves left on it after this rain. Woo!